Today down in the comments, I want to hear your favorite horror films from Hong Kong. I want to hear about your favorite Shaw Brothers, Golden Harvest, your favorite Cat 3 films. Horror movies or horror adjacent movies produced in Hong Kong. Hello, I'm Adam Caesar. This is Project Black T-Shirt, the channel where we take a new release or a reissue horror movie and then pair them with a reading recommendation that you will enjoy if you like those movies. Make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. I am the author of Clown in a Cornfield, the YA slasher horror novel from Harper Teen. This won the Bram Stoker Award. It was blurbed by Clive Barker. Uh, he called me an author who knows how to make us afraid. And there's going to be a sequel to this book, if you haven't heard. Uh, Clown in the Cornfield 2, Friendo Lives. If you pre-order or have pre-ordered Clown in the Cornfield 2 and want your copy signed, uh, the next best thing is I will send you a signed and personalized book plate wherever you are in the world. Uh, just send me your receipt that you actually pre-ordered it. Uh, the details on how to do that are down in the description of this video. And one lucky person is going to win, yes, this actual custom Friend of the Clown mask uh, made by a, uh, an artist named Robert Grove. Really, really cool. There's only like three of these in existence, and I'm going to be giving one of them away to someone who pre-orders Clown of the Cornfield 2, Friendo Lives, in hardcover. Uh, Pre-orders mean a lot. It's like the thing that is most helpful for a book and most helpful for an author. So I really, really hope you check it out. So at the beginning of this video, I asked about Hong Kong cinema. Um, I, for the longest time growing up, there was a, there was an island in my local mall. There was like a small shop, you know, one of those, one of those like uh, stands and the vendors in the middle of the mall. Um, who would sell gray market, bootleg, um, Hong Kong movies, uh, mostly Hong Kong movies, but all kinds of different um, Asian cinema. And so I kind of, from the very beginning of the DVD age, from the very beginning of collecting uh, movies, I've loved, loved, loved Hong Kong movies. And for whatever reason, with the advent of Blu-ray, there, there seemed to be a real lull. There seemed to be like... Um, Celestial had put out a bunch of the Shaw Brothers um, movies in nice um, official editions around when I was in college. And then for the longest time, there was this dry spell. Um, and now it seems like the dam has broken. And it's not only broken for movies like Shaw Brothers and Golden Harvest, um, but it's broken for uh, like the weirdo, like Cat 3 movies. Like Dr. Lamb is getting a nice new Blu-ray from uh, Unearthed Cinema. Um, so whatever happened, whatever the interest is or whatever the uh, legality is or licensing things that are, that are going on, um, Hong Kong movies are really hitting Blu-ray and the Blu-ray collector market in a big way. And I wanted to talk about that today with today's movie, Human Lanterns. Human Lanterns, um, this is out from 88 Films. 88 Films is a British Blu-ray label that um, has been going for a really long time. Uh, they, but they've mostly been, I think entirely been region two releases and I'm not big into importing stuff. I will occasionally, my region free capabilities are very limited and I don't like to import stuff when I don't have to. Um, but just recently within the last, um, maybe six months or so, 88 films has started doing, um, has started doing American releases, U S releases. Um, and human lanterns is one of them. This is a 1982, maybe 83, um, Shaw Brothers uh, wuxia film mixed with a horror movie. This is a this is a martial arts horror movie um, where the martial arts and the uh, horror are almost completely separate. They're almost like a plot b plot, um, but it is a, a, a wonderful example of both genres. Uh, and if you are not a, a big Shaw Brothers fan, if you if you or wondering where to start with these movies, if you've heard of like Come Drink With Me and Deadly Venoms and Eight Gra Diagram Pole Fighter, like if you've heard of these these kind of big movies and wanted a place to start and you are a horror fan, I would recommend Human Lanterns as kind of a, a nice exemplar. It's fairly big budget, um, it's well directed, it has uh, great fight choreography, uh, very, very, very um, melodramatic uh, storyline, a very, very, very um, eventful and incident-filled storyline that has a lot of different kind of uh, tropes of wuxia films and uh, kung fu movies kind of all crammed into a tight, like, 99 minutes. But before I go too, too, too deep into Human Lanterns, 
Um, I wanted a reason to talk about this on my channel. My channel is about horror movies, and I very, very rarely stray from talking about horror movies. But Human Lanterns being kind of a horror movie gives me the perfect in to talk about really my favorite physical media release in, like, years? I'm, I'm not exaggerating when I talk about this. Uh, this is the Shaw Scope Volume 1 set from Arrow Video. Uh, this came out, like, maybe, maybe it was, like, January, maybe it was December of last year, so maybe it was technically last year it came out. Um, but I got this, and I, when I get box sets, you can see there are a ton of box sets behind me. There's, I have even more, uh, over there. The, my approach to box sets is to pick out the movie I most want to watch and then go to that one first and then kind of go around and, 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 and I rarely, rarely, rarely watch box sets in any kind of order that they're presented in or uh, with any kind of amount of completionism. Like I'll pick at them and then watch some other movies and then come back to the box set. Uh, but this Shaw scope, I'm not exaggerating in that this is 12 movies in here and I watched them all bang, 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 bang. Not in a row. I would, I would have been like sleep deprived. Uh, but when I was watching movies, when I sat down, I was like, you know what? I'm going to go back to the Shaw so Scope set and I'm going to watch another one. Uh, that's how I approach this set. And it is terrific. Um, the one thing that I will say about it is it's kind of unwieldy with like, I know they're making like a, a widescreen, uh, kind of almost visual pun by having this thing be this long, but you don't really need that guys. Uh, at Arrow. Uh, but this is terrific. It has a nice, it has a nice little book, um, with a lot of writing about all the different films and placing them in their historical context. Uh, and then it has the films themselves, uh, set up like this, all new original art. We've got, a uh, King Boxer, um, the Boxer from Shang Tung. It has, it has some fantastic movies and Arrow started, uh, this was the first Shaw release that Arrow did, and it wasn't clear how they were going to continue doing their releases. So far, they've done a few standalones um, that aren't in these sets, which as a collector and as a completionist is kind of, I find a little annoying. I would have liked to have um, just keep doing volume two, volume three, volume four, um, and don't take major movies kind of out and, and not give them to me in the, in the set format. Um, but like the movies that they've taken out are, understandable why they've taken them out because movies like uh come drink with me is such a foundational movie that i'm sure someone doesn't want to buy a hundred something dollar set and just wants to get um come drink with me uh but they're it's not like these are like the b movies it's not like these are the um the remnants of whatever are left there are some major major movies in here um by some major directors uh lung kar lai and uh shang shay and it, it's a, a really really great introduction to shaw brothers if you want to go for the like <laughs> more expanded introduction uh if you want to sit down for 12 films this is the way to go this thing is goddamn incredible i loved it so much i like i not only watched every movie i watched like every special feature on every disc before taking the disc out and putting the next one in it was just a really really great experience this was like the nicest movie watching experience I've had this year for sure. Um, and it's not really hard. There's one movie in here that kind of counts. It's Shaw Brothers version of uh, King Kong, The Mighty Pinking Man, which is uh, a movie that they made with a bunch of um, Japanese artisans, a, a bunch of people who used to work for Toho. So it feels kind of like a Toho movie. It feels kind of like a Toho Kaijo movie. It feels kind of like the Dino De Laurentiis um, King Kong, and it really feels like a Shaw Brothers movie at the same time, but that's the only, that's the one movie in here that you can maybe kind of fudge it and say it's, yeah, it's kind of a horror movie, it kind of should be talking about on this channel, but if you have an all an interest, or if you've seen this around, and you're like, oh, I don't know, is it worth it? Uh, it's 100% worth it. The MSRP is pretty steep, but it goes on sale quite often, and I got mine for, like, either right around or right under 100 bucks, which is not what it it sells for. So if you look around, you can get it uh, cheaper. And I very, very, very much recommend it. All right, back to Human Lanterns. Um, this movie, not subtle. This is not a subtle movie. Uh, this is about two um, kind of noblemen, martial arts uh, guys who very, very counter to how these movies are usually set up. They're, I can't, you can barely tell who the protagonist is supposed to be because they're, they're given equal weight a little bit. Uh, I guess Tony Liu's character is a little bit more um, prominent. 
and he's facing down with Chan Kai Ta Kao Tai. And these are actors that if you watch the, sh the, the Shaw scope set, if you watch that, um, you will be intimately familiar because Shaw was just had these, everyone was under contract with Shaw. It was the directors were under contract, the writers were under contract, the actors were under contract. They ran basically their own little city inside of Hong Kong. Um, they reused sets, they reused costumes, directors were making overlapping movies, writers were making overlapping movies, cinematographers were being pulled off of, of projects and put onto other projects because it was like a factory and they were churning out these movies. They churned out not only uh, kung fu movies, but erotic films and horror movies and all, all these different um, very, very entertaining uh, movies. And not that the movies ever really... Well, they sometimes do, but not that the movies, to me, ever really get a sense of sameness, but it's almost comforting to see the same actors again and again and again and again in different roles. Uh, but here they're both playing uh, these two kind of hero actors that you see all the time as, as like, the typical good guys. They're playing kind of just jerks. They're both, they both seem like they're in the wrong. They're both kind of super conceited, um, trying to one-up each other, not only in their martial arts, but in, like, this, um, this lantern festival that happens i guess in the town every once in a while uh, or every year and it's like which one is going to win the lantern festival and commission the most beautiful lantern well at the same time there is this crazy hermit with a scarred face uh played by low lay who is looking to get revenge on one of the noblemen and he dons this basically a slasher outfit he dons this mask with all this hair on it and he dons these 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 razor claws with like monster claws and he's hopping around and he's abducting various women that are related to these noblemen either their concubines or their wives or their sisters um, and as he's taking them he is bringing them back to his lair and he is skinning them while they're alive and then he is making human lanterns he's using their flesh um, as the kind of paper to make these kind of classical chinese lanterns uh if it seems like those two storylines don't really go together, they kind of don't. The movie kind of stops dead every time there needs to be a kind of very fanciful, very colorful, um, very incredibly intricately choreographed uh, wuxia fight with all different kinds of weird weapons and wire work and people are flying all over um, and people are throwing like wine casks at each other and uh, all these different typical wuxia film stuff. And then you have... Uh, Lo Lei jumping around, giggling like a madman in his really cool uh, skull mask and uh, abducting women in this almost um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre meets Shaw Brothers um, sequences where he's making the lanterns and abducting people. And uh, it's, it's, it's so odd. It's such an odd movie because it, it just goes and goes and goes and goes and never seems to think back on like scenes that happened before it. And it's just, it's, it's presented at such a breakneck pace that you almost don't realize it as it's happening. But you, you also think like, well, like a slasher, especially a mass slasher, um, usually has some kind of mystery element to it, especially because we're like obscuring this guy's face for a good portion of the time that he is the killer. Um, but then you realize that like, there's only one person the killer could be. There's only one person that, that has any kind of motive or, or is, or is, uh, is threatening in any way to the heroes. Um, so there is no mystery element. It kind of just ignores that part and just moves on, moves on, moves on. And the, the set pieces get, uh, crazier and crazier, crazier. Um, the, the sets are beautiful. The, uh, choreography is beautiful. Uh, directed guy by contract, uh, Shaw, uh, director, uh, Chung Sun, who, uh, does beautiful work in this movie. So if anything I just said, if anything I've just shown uh, strikes your fancy, I very, very, very much recommend picking up Human Lanterns uh, now from uh, 88 Films. Uh, the special features are very, very good. They are uh, a commentary, which is maybe the most specific to the film part of the special features, although it is touched on in all the other featurettes. Uh, and then three different uh, interviews with uh, stars of the film. My favorite one was the Susan, Susan Shaw. She talks about human lanterns and she talks about how there were parts of it that had that couldn't be shown in theaters that were cut. And you will notice that when you watch the film, there's like a, a little bit of a quality shift when you get to one of the skinning scenes that must have been what, they, what she's talking about, what must have been cut. Um, but 
she talks about being one of the first um, uh, Chinese uh, actresses to go to Cannes and how um, showing up in Cannes and doing uh, these interviews, she kind of caused like a huge political kerfuffle. Like uh, it ended up, um, her films were then banned in Taiwan because Taiwan thought she was from, uh, she was kind of a shill for the mainland and um, all this different, it's, it's, she tells it better because I have no idea what I'm talking about, but it's, it was fascinating uh, and talks about her, her roles in uh, Shaw's erotic movies and how it, they were kind of hard up to find actresses that would uh, do nudity because it's very culturally different there. Um, but great movie, uh, great special features, uh, a really impressive set. And this is the first of these uh, American 88 films releases that I've uh, gotten. And I will be getting more because they're really, really good. This one was really, really good at least. And I just can't seem to get enough of these movies. Um, so Arrow better hurry up with their volume two of that Shawscope set. This week's book recommendation, completely kind of unrelated to what we were talking about, although I am uh, listening to the audiobook of These Fists Break Bricks, which, which is a little bit more explicitly related, uh, but I, I'll talk about that on a different uh, video. Uh, I am, at the same time that I was watching Human Lanterns, I was smack dab in the middle of watching all of the evil Bong movies. Um, which are uh, Full Moon and Charles Band. Charles Band actually directed all nine of them. There are nine of them. Um, and I'm, I'm wondering if I want to do a kind of uh, video countdown of all the evil bomb movies. I don't, I don't like them nearly as much as all the uh, Puppet Master movies, but there are some uh, kind of gems thrown in there. But as I've been doing that, I've been picking through Confessions of a Puppet Master, which is um, Charles Band's autobiography, which is co-authored with a man named Adam Felber. Uh, and it's really fun. It's really breezy. Uh, if you have seen my other video, if you've seen my Puppet Master video where I uh, talk about the whole, uh, whole franchise and kind of rank them uh, and talk about each one in depth, uh, I recommend a book there called It Came From The Video Aisle, which is a really exhaustive view of the complete history of Full Moon. And it's kind of an oral history where they like talk to a whole bunch of different people um, and it's, that's kind of a warts and all view. This is just like kind of a fun, uh, poppy, um, kind of Hollywood biography where he just shares a bunch of different, uh, anecdotes while at the same time talking generally about, um, his life. It's really, really interesting though. And it's, it's, it's some stuff, it's a lot of stuff, uh, that I've kind of heard before and, and, and know just from being a fan of band. Um, but it's, some stuff is really new and interesting. And there's a neat little like photo section where you can see like pictures of Albert Band and Marilyn Monroe and things like that. Uh, so it is it is it is well worth uh, it is well worth checking out if you're a Full Moon fan. And if you're a Full Moon fan, you probably already checked it out. Uh, but I thought I had to bring that up. And don't hold me to whether or not I'm going to make a video about all of the Evil Bong movies. But I might. I really might. All right. Don't forget that if you pre-order Clown in the Cornfield Two, Friendo Lives. Uh, I will sign it for you. The details are down in the description. Uh, if you haven't read the original, if you hadn't read Clown in the Cornfield, please check it out. Uh, the paperback comes with a little 15-page preview of the sequel. Please buy it. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you've read both of those, or if you've read if you've read that one and you're still waiting for Clown in the Cornfield, I have a bunch of other books for you. I have Video Night. I have The Summer Job. I have Exponential. I have the first one you expect and Zero Lives Remaining. Uh, all terrific Horror yarns, if you enjoy that kind of thing. All right. I will see you when I see you. I'll see you next time. I'm Adam Caesar. Bye-bye.